In today's episode of Unscripted with Kathy, let's talk about moving on. Or maybe not moving on. Because I know that a lot of people have a hard time moving on. I myself went through the not moving on phase. And it was so hard until I realized it was harder to not let go. Especially when the hand that you've been holding on to for so long is no longer there. Because they've already let go. And you're just holding on to the memories, to your imagination, to your hopes. A friend of mine the other day asked me, Is it okay that I'm still crying? Is it normal that I'm still hurting? Is it acceptable that I still want him back? Even though I know that he wasn't good for me. And I said, yes, of course. Because even though he wasn't good for you, even when someone is bad for us or only brings really sad moments, hurts us, makes us miserable, we love the person. So of course we're going to hurt. Of course we're going to miss them. Of course we're going to want to have them back but we must also realize that they're already gone that they're no longer there and that we need to move on not for them but for us so in today's episode of unscripted with kathy let's talk about what we can do to actually move on Moving on can be so hard. I know this because I've moved on so many times in the past. You might say, Oh, you move on so many times, so you must be used to it. I don't think anyone can ever get used to moving on. To saying goodbye to someone that you love. To saying goodbye to someone who used to be important to you. Saying goodbye to your hopes your dreams, your visions, your plans, the promises, everything that you built together with that person, instantly gone, wiped out. Break na tayo. I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't love you anymore. I met someone else. Those are the words that end something. And you are left with nothing or maybe something but something that you don't want because the one thing that you actually want is no longer there so moving on from that is never an easy thing and it doesn't matter how many times it happened to you every single time you have to move on from someone or something it can and will be painful There's also no timeline. There's no program that says, Oh, week one, we do this, and by week two, we feel this. Wouldn't it be great if it were something like that? If we could actually have a moment of just deleting someone, like in that movie, where you can just delete memories of someone from your mind so that when you see them, You won't remember them. And if you don't remember them, you won't hurt. It won't be painful. It won't be this miserable state that someone who used to be such a big part of your life is no longer there. And yet you're still there. You see the same memories. You see the same places. You see your room and they were a part of it. You see your home. And they were there before and now they're no longer there. And you just have to move on. Because you don't have a choice. You have to. You need to. So what is the first step? Since we can't delete people from our lives and our memories, the first step is to allow yourself to cry. You deserve it. 
You earned it. Somebody broke your heart. Somebody left you. Someone said goodbye. They didn't choose you. So yes, cry. Cry all you want and cry with all your heart. But cry for a moment. Cry for two weeks, a month even. But remember that you have to get up at some point. You can't just keep crying for no reason. Or you can't just keep crying because of the same reason over and over and over again. You're alive. There's still hope for something better. You might say, I don't want something better. Well, you know what? You deserve something better. So you have to want it because you owe it to yourself to make something more beautiful, to meet someone better, to have a better life more than the one that you wanted with that person because you are special. Just because that person doesn't see that you're special doesn't mean you're not. A person's opinion of you does not mean that you are that person or you are their opinion. They chose to leave you. It means they are no longer valid in your life. And any importance, any opinion, any thoughts they have of you, your life, your personality, everything has become null and void. They no longer matter because they chose to not matter in your life. And you need to remember that. So cry because it hurts. But cry within a time limit. Set yourself for 15 minutes a day. If you have work to do, have other things, cry. Go inside the bathroom, turn on the shower, sit on the floor, have your K-drama or Pinoy drama moment. And then after 15 minutes, stand up, wash up, make yourself gorgeous, get up, dress up, and move forward. When you get home, you can go ahead and cry again, but for 15 minutes only. Trust me, it is so rare that you would cry beyond 15 minutes because it can be very tiring to cry. So 15 minutes, set an alarm, it rings stop eventually you won't need those 15 minutes because you've let it out of your system and then it's time for step two acceptance they're no longer there you're no longer wanting to have them in your life you have accepted that they are no longer there that you are by yourself and that you have to move on step three moving on this means keeping everything that they've given you away, hiding it somewhere where you won't see it. I'm not saying that you have to throw everything out. But for now, hide any reminders. Rearrange your room. If you can, paint it a different color, put a different wallpaper, but make it different from the one that it used to look like when they were there. A small change can make a big difference. And then, pursue something new. Pursue new hobbies, new things. For now, while you are healing, try to avoid the places that you went to. If you work in the same place, avoid them. Befriend someone else, befriend someone new, change your schedule if you can. But there's always something that you can do. I'm sure that if they left you, unless they're narcissists, they're also going to avoid you. And if they keep coming back to you, then ask them, you've already left. Why are you here again? If all your goal is just to mess with me, I don't like it. I prefer that you please stay away. I don't want you in my life. Because you should be able to say goodbye when you're supposed to say goodbye. They can't keep coming back just to hurt you. You are not a toy for them to play with or amuse them when they're bored. You are so much more than that. And then, venture into new things. Meet new people. I'm not saying fall in love. I'm just saying meet new people. Discover things about you. 
do things that you wanted to do but you couldn't before because you had to think of someone else. This is your era to be selfish. Do the things that you love. Do the things that you want to by yourself or with new friends. Discover who you are. That is the fifth stage. Discovery of who you are or discovery of who you were before they came into your life. Because you need to remember who you are and why you need to be loved. And you need to fall in love with that person again before you even think of getting into a new relationship. Remember, how can someone else love you when you don't love yourself? How can someone else respect you when you don't respect yourself? You need to know who you are, why you matter, why you are an amazing person that someone should value before you even think of exploring something with someone else. Because you need to remember you have boundaries, you deserve respect, and most of all, you need to be treasured because you are someone worth treasuring. I hope this helps someone. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!